Hi everyone, in this video we're going to move on to the next phase of our production. Um, in the, the first phase we've uh, covered the modelling of our object uh, and in this phase we're going to do UV uh, template uh, creation. So a UV template is basically um, a system that we use for positioning pictures onto our object um, when we're texturing. Uh, and created materials for the object. So uh, I've got an example of a UV template here. Um, let me just maximize this. So uh, a UV template basically uh, is uh, just a basic image like this that we export out of the software and it shows the 3D object that we've built um, but peeled open and flattened out into a two-dimensional format. So uh, what we're seeing here is a can. Um, the sides of the can, where the, where the printed sort of label is, um, has basically been positioned here as this large sort of rectangular area. We have a ring pull just here and the little rivet that goes with it. And then we have the top of the can just here uh, where the ring pull would normally sit. So the ring pull normally would be about here and the hole that you drink out of would be about here. And there's sometimes little embossed uh, text lines and so on that might say, you know, do not litter or please recycle and those kind of things. And there's usually sort of like embossed patterns and little bumps and things on the top of here as well, which we can see in a, a sample picture I've got. So this is a UV template. So we create this in Maya. We export this image out uh, from Maya and we put this in Photoshop and then basically use it almost like a coloring in book. And we actually just create our, tep, uh, our actual final um, uh, texture images, like our, our label or our printed areas and so on, logos and things. We actually fit them into these regions. Okay, So the coordinates, the UV coordinates, basically then know which part of the picture gets applied to which part of the model. So this template is actually from this render down here. So you can see here on the top, we've got this sort of embossed region. We've got the ring pool. We've got these little embossed areas um, and they've been created using what's called a bump map. So um, it's a texture you make in Photoshop, but you don't actually physically see the colors of the textures. What you see is the surface you apply it to um, basically becoming embossed or debossed. So the surface of the object, it looks like it's popping out or it's been pushed in. Um, and it makes it look like the object has more detail than it really has. Uh, so that's a bump map. Now, with the bottle, uh, we'll be using a bump map, uh, or we can use a bump map to create things like these little dimples and these grooves. And uh, you can see here on this one, um, it's a Coca-Cola bottle, obviously. Um, the actual logo for Coca-Cola is actually kind of embossed here in this little kind of dimpled textured region. So we can use a bump map to create that. So the actual finished material still looks like clear plastic like the rest of the bottle, but it has this kind of surface kind of texture to it. So that's what we use a bump map for. A color map is basically like this label. So we'd actually create that in Photoshop. Okay. Um, so uh, this introductory video is really sort of more about setting up the, the software, getting ready to start working um, with our, our UV tools. Um, so the information is exactly the same for both the can and the bottle, which is why I'm kind of covering both in this video, rather than doing the same video twice, um, covering the same things. Um, up here on the, the, the lid for the bottle, uh, we've got these little kind of grooves and this little rim. We can use uh, a bump map to create those onto the, the lid that we've already made. Uh, and usually on the top of the lid, there'll be a little logo printed, so uh, we'll use a, uh, a template on the top of the lid to position um, a little color logo as well. So uh, let's take a quick look at the software. We'll set the software up getting ready for, for working with these UVs. So whether you're doing the, the can or the bottle at this stage, um, you basically need to do the, the exact same setup uh, that I'm about to show you. Okay, um, now obviously I've just got the CAN file open. Um, I've just opened this up so that I've got um, basically something I can show you already. But uh, we could also equally have the bottle open. Um, it doesn't really matter in this case. So um, whichever one you're working on, 
just open that file up. Okay. So uh, in order to get to our UV tool sets, uh, we need to make sure our status menu um, for our menu setup here is set to polygons. And that will give us access to create UVs and edit UVs just here. Uh, two menus like this. Now, uh, also in your polygons uh, shelf tab just here, along the shelf at the end, we've got four projection UV projection systems, planar, cylindrical, spherical, and automatic, and we will be using some of these. Basically, uh, you use these to unwrap the model in 2D space. And that'll be uh, become a little bit more clear as to what they do a little bit later on um, in, uh, in the next uh, few videos. Uh, the last uh, button is a shortcut uh, button for the UV texture editor. And that's the viewport you use when you're actually working on your templates. You actually create your templates in this UV texture editor. Um, now you can also access, you can either click that button to open it, or you can get to your editor from the edit UVs menu down the bottom, UV texture editor. So if you open that panel up, uh, you should somewhere uh, basically get this floating window. And it'll look something like this. Now it's empty at the moment because I don't have any objects selected. If you've got something selected, it'll probably show up maybe a big tangled mess of lines. Um, something like that. Or like that. Or like that. Uh, or something completely different to all of those. Okay. Every single model that you make in Maya produces its own default UV map. And as you're modeling and making changes using your modeling tools, things like extrude and so on, the template gets messier and messier and messier. And uh, that's the reason why we have to go through and actually create a template from it. Essentially what we're doing is cleaning up the mess that the software has made. And we're kind of uh, creating a more logical layout for the UV template so that we can understand which parts of the model are where on the template so that when we're creating our textures in Photoshop, um, it becomes a lot more easy to identify different parts of the model. So um, you'll notice here at the moment that uh, the objects are all appearing in this upper right corner of this grid. Okay. Um, basically, what we've got is uh, 2D space inside the grid and 3D space here in our main perspective viewport. Uh, so you can kind of think of these as being sort of like a parallel universe. All right. This is the same model as this. Okay, it's the same model existing in two different dimensions. Okay, now to just make this a little easier to see, I'm just going to have the this ring pull selected. Okay, now at this point, you're probably not. It's not really going to be necessary that you be selecting any of your objects or doing anything like that. You can kind of select things and have a look at how they display over here. But I'm not actually going to be doing anything in this project in this video. I should say. Um, as far as creating the templates, I'm just kind of going to explain the idea behind this um, because you'll kind of need to understand how this functions and, and what the logic of this is. Okay, so we've got 2D space, 3D space. Now, our 3D space is defined by three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. So up, down, forwards, backwards, left, right. Okay. Um, in here, uh, being two-dimensional space, it uses two different axes and they're labeled differently so that you don't mistake them for being three-dimensional axes. Okay, so um, for example, we wouldn't use Y and X because they already exist here in 3D space. So what they use is U and V. So the U axis, um, I'll just deselect that for a second. The U axis is this red one and it's horizontal. So the U direction is this, this direction here, left to right. The V direction is the green axis, which is up and down. Okay, so that's vertical. So that's how you remember them. V is vertical, which means U is horizontal. All right. Um, so even though they're colored red and green, they are not the same axes as Y and X. Okay, so U and V is 2D, Y and X is 3D. All right, so um, like 3D space, Two, uh, the 2D UV space over here has an origin in the middle of the grid, which is zero, and then it counts up in every direction from that point. So 
in this direction, from the middle to the left, you've got minus 0.1, minus 0.2, minus 0.3, and so on. Um, in the right, uh, towards the right of the grid, in the positive direction, you've got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So basically, um, the way that the grid is separated up is you've got zero in the middle and the edge is one. The top is one and then the bottom down here is minus one and then the far left is minus one. So UVs tend to work within the range of zero to one. All right. Uh, and that's sort of why it's keeping the objects, no matter which object I select, the position in the UVs is always in this upper right-hand corner. This is the positive end of the um, the two axes, U and V. And this is where you'll need to create your template. For more com complex objects, um, and quite some way down the track, you may, uh, those of you that are kind of pursuing this, eventually will start using other areas of the grid, and even areas outside the grid. Um, but generally speaking, when you're starting off, it's you basically always use this top right hand corner. Uh, the software automatically is kind of set up to look um, and accept templates in the top right hand corner without changing any other settings. Okay, so that's why um, we're kind of using this. All right, so um, basically, uh, what I want to do is get this panel set up as part of the viewport. Um, on the Mac uh, platform, sometimes this panel gets stuck behind the main window and it can be a bit of a pain trying to get it back. Um, the reason for that is that the software kind of treats it like it's two separate software programs, but the dock at the bottom where your icons are, uh, it doesn't, it, it treats it um, as one program. So normally, uh, if you accidentally click on your, your, your desktop, on a Mac, it hides the software, the, so all the software disappears. And it ends up down sort of on your dock, and you, what you've got to do is go down and you press the icon for it. So what happens is, um, if this uh, panel gets stuck behind your main panel, trying to bring it back up by clicking on the dock icon doesn't work. Um, so it can be a real pain. If you try minimizing the software, it minimizes both windows. Um, and then the icon just brings them back up with this still behind. So what I tend to do is separate the main viewport into two, and I then um, set this up, instead of it being a floating panel, I set it up as a, an actual viewport. So let's do that. I'll just turn that off, and I'll come up to, uh, sorry, across to my uh, preset viewport uh, buttons just here, and I'm going to grab the perspective outliner button, just left-click that. And that pops open this outliner like this. Now, uh, what you want to do is kind of bring this about halfway across so you've got two panels that are about the same size. And what we'll do is change the outliner list into the UV texture editor. So we go to the panels menu at the top here, down to panel, and then down to UV texture editor. And that'll switch it to the UV texture editor. And this now works as a regular viewport. Okay, so if I put my cursor in here and tap the space bar, I can go full screen on that viewport. Tap it again to go back out to a double view, and I can do the same thing over here. So I can switch between those two uh, workflows, 3D and 2D, or I can have them side by side. Now there'll be some times where you don't need to see or select anything over here, and you're just kind of adjusting stuff over here, and usually then that's those are the times where I go full screen on this. Um, but when I'm trying to do selection, sometimes it can be tricky over here, um, or sometimes it can be tricky over here. And in that case, I like to have both open. So if I need to select part of an object over here, I can do it here. And then if I have to select a different bit that I can't quite reach here, I can do it over here very quickly. So um, so that uh, that's sort of how I tend to work with these. Um, the last thing I want to just mention is our component selection. So normally, um, in uh, while we've been modeling, we're used to right-clicking on an object and selecting edge, vertex, or face, depending on parts of the object we want to select like this. Now, you'll see with those uh, faces um, selected here in our 3D view, uh, what it's doing is selecting those over here in the UV space, but it's hiding the rest of the object. Okay, keep in mind 
this only displays things that are selected over here. All right. Um, now, likewise, you know, you can select vertex mode and grab those vertices. Um, in this case, uh, with vertex mode, you can see it shows the entire mesh, but it only highlights the selected ones. Okay. Uh, and edges exactly the same way. So I can select edges and you can see them highlighting over here in brown or orange. So editing them, moving them around, changing their shape, um, moving, rotating, scaling. Uh, this is where it becomes a little bit more interesting. We've been used to um, selecting things over here in edge, vertex or face mode. And we've been used to moving them, rotating or scaling them like this. Okay, so, you know, I can move... I can rotate, I can scale, and so on. Okay. Now notice when I do that, nothing happens over here at all. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, this is a it's a different space. It's this is two D. So in order to edit things over here, I need to use a fourth component mode, and that's UV mode. So if I right click on the object and select UV instead of edge, vertex, or face. I can drag across the object and select UVs. So a UV is basically, it's um, you can very easily confuse them with vertices. They're in the same locations, but uh, UVs highlight green like this, whereas vertices highlight yellow. So that's the difference, the main difference visually between them. So in UV mode, you'll notice that the, the, the scale, rotate, and move handles appear in the UV editor, and I can move things around here. When I do that, nothing happens over here. All right. So with UV selected, these tools activate in 2D space. When I switch to uh, a, a 3D component mode like Vertex, if I select the exact same point, you can see now the handle disappears from here and appears over here, and I can change the shape here. So just remember, 3D. Uh, 3D space, use edge, vertex, face, all right? Over here, 2D space, you use UV, and your tools will appear over here. Okay, so that's basically the, the setup. So you'll need to do that um, whether you are using uh, your, or modeling your can or your bottle. Um, basically, you'll want to set your viewports up like this. So in the next um, videos, we are going to begin uh, creating a template for each part of our model. Okay, uh, and that's going to be occurring, uh, as I've said, over here. Uh, once we finish this UV templating stage, we'll be moving on to texturing and we'll be doing some work in Photoshop. So uh, with that said, I'll leave this video here and I will see you for the, um, the beginning of our UV templating.